Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for your patience as we get started. And thank you all for coming out today to Government's Place in the Market with Elliot Spitzer. My name is Daniel Pritchard. I'm the Marketing Director of Boston Review. Boston Review is an independent, nonprofit magazine of ideas. We cover a wide range from global politics and economics to contemporary fiction, poetry, and film. Please pick up a copy on your way out at the door or at the book table in the lobby. Today's event is the final installment for this academic year of the Ideas Matter Lecture Series. Ideas Matter is a joint project of Boston Review and the MIT Political Science Department. The goal of the series is to encourage serious debate, reasonable and fact-based, on key issues of public policy. Over the course of the year, we've discussed campaign finance, internet freedom and foreign policy, technology and poverty, immigration, marriage, and full employment. Today, I have the honor of introducing Professor Simon Johnson, who will be introducing our speaker, Elliot Spitzer, whose book, Government's Place in the Market, is about to appear in the Boston Review book series with MIT Press. Professor Johnson is the Ronald A. Kurtz Professor of Entrepreneurship at the MIT Sloan School of Management. He is a senior fellow at the Peterson Institute for International Economics, a co-founder of BaselineScenario.com, and a member of the Congressional Budget Office's panel of economic advisors. Professor Johnson is a regular com contributor to the economics blog at the NewYorkTimes.com, as well as Project Syndicate and Bloomberg, and is contributing business editor at the Huffington Post. He is also the author of 13 Bankers, The Wall Street Takeover, and The Next Financial Meltdown, a best-selling assessment of the dangers now posed by the US financial sector. We are very happy to have him with us today. Please help me welcome to the podium, Professor Simon Johnson. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for, for turning out today. I think this uh, speaks well of us uh, as, a, as a community of people engaged with, uh, with, with ideas. You didn't come here to hear me speak. You came here to listen to Elliot Spitzer. Uh, and I'll let you have him in just a moment. His book is terrific. I recommend it uh, highly. Uh, it's powerful. It's, a, it's an easy read in some senses. It's a very deep read and a read you should. It's worth reading many times and thinking about the points that he's making. Elliot Spitzer, I would suggest, he's known as the, the Sheriff of Wall Street. I, I'm suggesting we call him the last Sheriff of Wall Street, or well, the last one we had was still waiting for his replacement. Um, as Attorney General of, of New York State from 1998 to 2006, Mr. Spitzer made an indelible impact uh, on Wall Street and on our thinking about uh, white-collar crime in the United States. He went on bec to become governor of the state of New York, where he had many pioneering and important ideas in the realm of education, health care, and economic development, ideas I think that will, will continue to resonate as we try to sort out uh, the United States and decide what we do uh, going forward. Uh, he also hosts, hosts a, a, a powerful and important TV show in the arena, which you can see on, on CNN most nights. Ms. Spitzer, thank you very much. Thank you, Simon. Thank you all for being here. It really is a privilege to, uh, to speak here at MIT. And, and I was saying on the way in from the airport, I've always held MIT in a bit of awe because as opposed to the schools I went to, which you know, have fair reputations, MIT was where you actually did rigorous thinking. There were numbers attached to most of the studies, and there were provably right and wrong answers. I always took courses, I told uh, Michael, who's traveling with me today, I said I always took courses where there was uh, an opportunity for partial credit. And that, that was, uh, <laughs> it was one of my important lessons I've tried to impart to my kids over time. I'm hoping I'm saying this early enough. My daughter, who's uh, a junior, a little bit up, up uh, the river um, here at another school, is stopping by. I hope she hasn't uh, heard me speak in such uh, terms about Harvard, which is where she is. Anyway, well, let me say this about Simon. Simon wrote a book, 13 Bankers, that is really the book you should read. It is brilliant. It is a powerful critique of what has happened to our financial system. And I say this with all due appreciation, it is not an easy read. It taxes you, it pushes you, it makes you think. It is filled with numbers, complicated ideas, as his books always are and should be. But I would highly recommend it to you because if you really want to see what has morphed and what has happened in our economic structures, that is the book that will do it. 
I, I wanted to promote one other book today. I suppose I'm here to promote mine, so I, I will do that. You know, I, I'm, even though I was in politics, I'm always a little bit embarrassed when I'm purely involved in self-promotion, but I'll, it, it doesn't stop me, as you will see. The, um, <laughs> embarrassment is something you learn to live with when you've had my life. The, um, <laughs> Um, it, well, that made me lose my train of thought. The, uh, <laughs> the, the other book I really do want to promote is by Josh Four, and, and it's called Moonwalking with Einstein. And if you haven't heard about it, it's a book about memory. We, we had him on the show the other day, and it was fascinating. He's from one of these families where all, all the kids, the parents, they're just brilliant, they do eclectic things. The reason I want to promote it is that we have had in our nation uh, a case of universal amnesia that has really unfortunately permitted us to forget the last couple years. And the reason that's relevant to what I'm talking about today is I, when I was Attorney General and as Simon said, I was AG from 98 to 2006, we did lots of things that led to the germination of the ideas that ended up in this book, and I'll get to that in a moment. But then we had this economic cataclysm. And at the moment of the economic cataclysm, people were forced against their will to confront some of the pure ideological boundaries and some of the ideological thinking that had driven us to the precipice, in my view, over the precipice. And I thought, aha, we will have that epiphany that will teach us the lesson that will bring us back. We will finally embrace rational policy once again. And here we are about two years later, and I'm saying to myself, have, what's, what happened? How can this possibly be? Didn't people learn the lesson? Didn't, pe didn't people see what happened? Haven't we taken anything from the crises, the cataclysm, the maldistribution of wealth, the absolute horror we have lived through? And I'm afraid to say the answer is no, they didn't. Because I see both in the po politics of the moment, in the ideology of the moment, I, I see the conversation, which is sort of a, a word I don't like to use, but you know, such as it is, the conversation down in Washington is at such a level that I am absolutely persuaded nobody was paying attention, or they don't do what Simon r alluded to, uh, uh, which is to pay attention to facts. And I'm not talking about coming here so I can propose an alternative ideology that is equally uh, distant from the facts we've lived through and the history we've lived through. It is very hard to have lived through the last couple of years and draw the conclusions that the Tea Party could draws. I just think it's hard to do that and be a sane person. And, and yet, they do. And it, you know, it's very hard to live through the past couple of years and believe in the libertarianism uh, of Rand Paul. And you know, parenthetically, I interviewed him earlier today for our show, we did a pre-tape of the show will be live tonight, the rest of it, eight to nine, I recommend it, see I said. <laughs> Self-promotion is something that uh, you learn when you're in the commercial businesses. But uh, here he is, very smart, but he, he believes the libertarian stuff that, that he has been spouting for the past couple of years. And so when I say we need collectively to revisit our history, I really believe that. How can we be where we are today because I fear that as a society we're about to go over the precipice once again. Now, th that, that was all preamble. Well, let me frame the, the conversation this way. I had an absolutely spectacular time when I was Attorney General and I was Governor, too brief as it may have been, because there's nothing better than being in the arena, hence the name of the TV show that, that, that I'm uh, you know, hosting these days. It is wonderful to be there and to actually be in a position to try to affect public policy, to think through these tough issues and go from the classroom and say, I'm actually sitting behind a desk, what should we do? And you do it in fits and starts, you experiment. And that's why, you know, Roosevelt's great quote that you try something, if it fails, give it up and do something different, but at least try something. That's what governance is all about. Th there were moments that, that were just fun. I mean, one of my favorites, and so if some of you have heard this story, I apologize for those of you who haven't, uh, you know, at least I, I found it enjoyable. I was talking one evening, had been invited by the Wall Street analysts to speak at their annual dinner. And as I'll describe in a few moments, uh, I had a somewhat fraught relationship with Wall Street writ large and with the analysts in particular. And I'll describe the case in a moment or two. But suffice to say that we had subpoenaed all the emails pretty much that had ever been created on Wall Street. And we were reading them, and they were not pretty to read, and they were certainly not pretty to read if you were an investor on Wall Street. I hope none of you are, for your own sakes. But uh, actually, that's not true. Maybe, maybe you're front-running and you're doing just fine. The, the, but I got to the lectern, and I looked out at the audience of about three, 400 uh, analysts, all in their black ties, because this was their annual awards dinner. And they were going to get awards, gold, silver, and uh, bronze, I guess, for the being the most proficient analysts at recommending stocks to the investing public. We had actually crunched the numbers and determined that those who were getting the gold standard, the, the, who were the peak, you know, these were their Olympians, 
Had you followed their advice, you would have lost 30% of your money that year, and it went on down from there. They really were not doing their clients a tremendous amount of, uh, you know, not helping them a great deal. But anyway, put that.